So this is an evening yoga class for my lovely students in Dishu, which is a small town in Cheshire, Cheshire, um, in England. So um, this is the first time I've recorded in front of them. So they're all just behind the lens now, um, probably going to giggle and crazy. Um, so let's see how we go. So we're going to start standing up. And first of all, I'd like us to settle the feet, even weight through the four points of the feet. So you remember the four points of the feet? One, two, three, four. I'm just checking out. And I think it's called pronation, yeah, it is when the ankle starts to do funny things. So just check that your ankle is nice and balanced. Roll the shoulders back. Good. And then roll them forward. And as you do that, you can feel shoulder blades moving too, necks moving too, and then back again. And I'd like you to try to do this. Now here's a challenge. As many times in the day as you can and see who gets the maximum. So, you know, do a few and then you've got to leave a gap. And obviously don't cheat and do a few three seconds later. Just pop the numbers, just leave a gap, go off and do something else and see when you can remember to do it again. Okay, because we want these working properly. Okay, and then breathing in, going up. And stretching the hands up in Namaste, right up to the heavens, palms together and thumbs crossing. That's nice. And then lift a bit more if there's somebody Pulling you up by the wrist and check that the chin is not going up. Aha, two. Okay. And then open your armpits up. Just like that. And hopefully that lift is also the rib cage away from the pelvis. And then um, try not to be tense, like it's kind of softening out into it, but still quite stretched. Right, and then breathing out, coming down to shoulder level. And then try to touch another inch that way, as if there was a wall there, and another inch that way, as if there was a wall there. And it's just stretching on the video, they can see loads of books. This is a Quaker meeting house, and so there are lots of books behind. And then we'll do what I call the Egyptian dance movement because it's, it's good for where the tendons and ligaments tighten up and the muscles spasm. Okay. Bit more of that. Good. And then coming back to the mountain, just let's stand steady for a moment. Kardasana, nice and grounded into the earth, kind of the head lifting. And dropping tailbone tucked under. And the feet are hip joint sets apart. And then breathing in with the palms out, going all the way up. Lovely. And then bend the knees if you need to. And we'll go to halfway. And then breathe out all the way down into the forward bend. And then seeing how you feel. So um, we've got one pregnant student in the class, so I would separate the thighs a bit. So uh, that might help for later. And just dropping the head down as much as possible. Don't necessarily aim for the floor, and don't certainly don't block the backs of the knees. Okay, so it's quite soft in the legs. But if you can open up the shoulder blades, you want the back of the heart area open. And you can hold on to the back of the heart, heart area, the knees, anywhere that feels comfortable to you. Or you can even grab hold of your elbows, tuck the chin in, and allow the weight of the arms. You can jiggle left shoulder, right shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder. You're coming down that little bit more. Tentatively open out the backs of the knees, but I don't want them locked. 
So you try where your thumb position is best. And whilst you're in the pose, another um, favourite bad habit of mine was <clears throat> I actually have a very competitive streak and I was always trying to do it more, you know, do it better. Be the one straightest and lowest. Until I realised that I was actually blocking the yoga energy that I was trying to bring to equilibrium to balance me. That striving was creating a problem in the in the way that yoga works. So relaxing into it. I think if there are mistakes to do in yoga, I have done most of them. <laughs> you probably still are doing a few. So from there, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to come up sideways, squat, squat, up, up. So that's just protecting the back to here. And then I'd like you to lift. Um, okay. Yeah, exactly. So we're all falling over. We're doing skittles. And you might need to grab something and do the lift. Okay. So it helps to have one arm out. That's a bit. If you think it's going to be a bit tricky, do what I'm doing. I'm testing out how my hip feels this evening as I do that lift. Okay. Exactly. And then probably easier, bend the toe, bend, bend the knee, coming out. And even if you stay there just for two seconds, that's fine. Just a con deep concentration. And then let's do the other side a little bit playfully, remember? Let's just try, first of all, lifting that other leg up, seeing how it goes. I'm not necessarily going straight at the moment. I'm going to go sideways. Okay, and then if you need to hold on to something, bend them, the knee and raise them. Okay. So you might not look the most elegant of the yogis here. And yes, so we've got people holding on at various places. That's a good idea. Hold on at the, yeah, various places. And also, if you had a belt, if I got a belt, is that a belt? Yeah, belts are good. We can hold it round the foot. And fold. Yeah, much, much easier. Very much easier. So keep your belt fairly near, it's really helpful. Um, and I just want to see uh, where are all the blocks. Over, all over the place. Wouldn't mind one block demonstrating. Just me a block. There. So we did we did both sides, and then we go into Rukhsasana. So remember that your trousers, yoga trousers, can sometimes be really slippy. So you might find it's not going to stay there. You might wish to go to the knee. You might need to wish to go to the calf, even the foot, even hovering above the floor. Okay, so it's a balanced pose. Put the arms all the way up and breathe. Yeah. I think the tailbone arms are a little. Don't worry if you wobble and fall over. If you're wobbling and you come out, pause, look around the room a bit, shake the legs a bit, go on the toes, same side, have another go. When we try it, switch from the knee. And if you're really good at it, you think, hey, you're good at this, you're allowed to, you're allowed to think, oh, 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 not doing too bad. Appreciation. Something that you can do. I'm breathing out to halfway, the oak tree. I think mine's a bit of a seagull, but you know, oak tree. Oh, a plane coming into land in windy weather. And then releasing them. So I know for some of you it's not your best pose, but hey, just keep trying it a little, even if it's only for a few seconds. And then let's do the other side. So, other foot comes up. Okay. And it helps to 
I think it's about 12 feet in front of you, or even more, but then it takes a spot. Which is why, as a teacher, it's easy to stop off and look around the room. And then, thing you can get into a full poplar, tailbone tucked under, shoulders down, shoulder blades coming together and down towards the waist. And then, as I glance around the room, that's when it gets a bit wobbly for me. Your ankle joint is working hugely. Mm -hmm. And then breathing out and down. And if you find you've come down and out of it, but you want to be sort of in it, okay, so you're still balancing on one leg if it's down at the ankle. And then release and down and back into the nice steady mountain. So, what was interesting in that is that the first one was more wobbly, wasn't it? And usually the first one is more wobbly because we don't quite know what we're doing yet. But once we start, oh, it's like anything. Oh, that's how you ride a bicycle. <laughs> you do that. It's once your body's gone, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I get what we're doing. So we're certainly fine on the balance of the easy. Unless you're standing on a wonky bit of floor. Um, and there's, well, how old does this meeting have? We said it was 1,500. You've got wonky floors. So, okay, Coming back in nice steady mountain. Check the bit and that's lumping here in the belly. Shoulders down, bring down slightly, out of the head, relaxing. Some schools teach to hold the arms, I'd like to say, but actually I find that it's it's preventing energy moving through the body. So I I'm just hanging and I let go from the shoulders because we're often holding the arms from the shoulders. Let them drop. Hmm. Steady. Immovable. Unshakable. And I suppose if you do it several times a day. Standing in the hallway at home, standing in the bathroom, standing at the in the queue at the supermarket, standing waiting to pay for your coffee, just allowing it to increase the steadiness and balance. Okay. And then let's step out. With the toes, if straight ahead is 12 o'clock. So I'm going to have the toes at 10 o'clock and beautiful. So that when we bend the knees, the toes are going over the second foot next to that big toe. And I'm going to imagine that I'm going to um, sit on the stool. So it's quite helpful to have your feet on your sitting mat. So you can always go sideways on um, if you had your mat facing me. Okay, or turn your mat so you can still see me. And then just look at the knees. So bend one knee. Going over that second toe, yes, that hinge joint is now today. Oh, no. Yes, that's today. So that's where I want it. And one of the big problems of, the, of any of the squats is as we go down, we get back going to the horse pose, is that is the knee compromise where that joint is actually being damaged by going forward. Keep it out. So that, and if you say, well, I can't go out that far, and then you get there, something <laughs> just in. Okay, so we're still keeping that joint nice and safe. So I'm going as wide as I can because it makes it easier. Breathing in, going up. Watching the knees, have a look. Breathe out, watch the knees. Okay, when you get down to what's comfortable, see, if you can go out, heel toe, heel toe a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get to a point where actually, you really wish you hadn't gone down that far. <laughs> and you just do a little bit of bouncing. But remember the knees, if it's going out, not in. Oh, yeah, here, here, here. Yeah. Okay, so we're just. Okay. And remember, if you've had enough, come on. Don't wait for me. This can be too much. Too long, too much. This is check posture. Yeah. Okay, and then down a little bit more and put the hands on the knees. And we go into sumo wrestler. 
That's one of the few poses where can you see my shoulders have gone away? That's okay. It's like I'm being a tortoise, bringing the head into the shell. And the main thing is I'm sitting as low as I can with my tailbone. Okay. So where's that hurting? It ducks us inside the thigh. Yep. Yep. And there. Yeah. We don't do this very long in your life, do we? <laughs> and then watch me. What I'd like you to do is I'd like to go over to one side, but watch that knee joint and back. So I want the knee joint on the opposing leg to go straight as the other one bends from side to side. And that's doing me more interesting things. You do, you do, you like that man. And actually, I like the way that you really are protecting your knees there. That's just quite good. Okay. So, can you do that a little bit straight up in the spine? A little bit tricky. You'll find here starts to work more, and here starts to work more. <sighs> Enough. And then you your toe heel toes together a bit. And we're going to right. That's your favourite. Now get your block block closed because you might need it. Put your hand here. If you find this really tricky to do, you can go and put your heel on a block and squat like so. Or you could grab one of these patterns. We think is the technical term, and you can do the same pose. So if your heels are up, you can start, and you can even go, yes, this is a really good pose. I'm really happy here. This is fun. Oh, I'll stay here a lot. Okay, who wants to have it? Yeah. So choosing. Choosing your weapon, choosing your yoga prop, we're coming down into the spot. So don't worry too much if you can't go feet flat. But when you are down and your feet, your feet are flat, watch the pronation of the ankle that it's not falling inwards and it's not falling out. So watch my ankle there. It's actually, watch if you can see, that's falling in and that's correctly. And then the elbows go inside the knees. And we push. Okay. It looks like I'm sitting on a block, and it's not sure. But you can if you wish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just just look like steady. Okay. So for some people this is an easy pose, and I think it's for people who regularly reach down for things or you know. I mean in India they don't actually um Bit much on chairs, or they didn't used to, but they actually sit at bus stops like this. I mean, I I, I was there at the bus stop, so I thought, well, okay, I've joined again. Well, I'll sit there, go chat away, chat away. Yeah, that's why I say to people, stay in the pose and just pop, a, pop your heel up on something. Yeah. Achilles might be really tight at the back. And it just will not go down yet. Okay. And then if you are happy, you come down. And the trick is to bring the knees together. And then you roll on the inside of the foot. And you come back up. And that, I think you, some of you know, that's my favourite party trick. So you're just sitting back and coming up. You can sit, sit on your tussock. Yeah, and then come back up. But this, can you see what's happening with my knees? They're going in, the hands go forward, and then as the hands come back, I push the knees in. Mm -hmm. Nice going on to the top of it. It is fantastic. Fantastic. Well, you are sitting on the block. And yes, yes. Right. <laughs> and then checking again pronation of the ankle bone. I have to always push mine out so that I come up, protecting my knee joint over that toe, not collapsing it in as I come up. I'm going forward to protect coming up, opening up, and going into star pose. 
And if you have low blood pressure, which I do, you might feel a little bit dizzy. Okay. And your blood pressure will be all over the place. Just take a few breaths. What I tend to do is just remember not to kind of breathe too shallowly, slowly breath, take really in. And then the crown of the head and the tailbone become the fifth and sixth limb. And they all radiate out. My toes are radiating that way. Hands radiating. Okay. Chin is not up. The breath will squeeze and compromise the back of the neck. And there we are in the lovely start. More. More. And then from there, heel toe, heel toe out. Okay. I would go as far as you can go. And usually, when I say that, it's quite a good idea. <laughs> it's going to be much worse if you're not wide. Okay, good. And can you guess what we're going to do? We're coming forward into the wide angle forward bend. But the thing that's important in this one is a big gap between the pelvis and the ribcage. So lift that ribcage up, reach up there to the bar with the gin and tonics on. Up, and then breathing out and down. Okay, lovely. And you're going down at first, the hands are well in front of you. And keep that belly long. So if you're not sure your belly's long, and you're a little bit worried that maybe your internal organs are squashed up, you just watch a trick. You walk the hands more forward until you've got a long belly and then you push the pelvis back if you can we push the pelvis back as we slide the hands back so you can use blocks here you know you could even rest your head like so on a block if you you know find it's far too tight in these inner thigh adductors um but just going down fairly comfortably and you might find that not both legs are straight. One knee might be bent. You might need to, on, my, on this leg at the moment, I think I pulled it too much. Just going to let it rest in. But dropping forward, it's a soothing pose. Forward bones are always soothing and calming. And you can reach out to the ankles if you can reach them, or to the calves, to the shins, lowering down. And I'm still just protecting this area. And then you can imagine if you if you wish that the crown of the head touches the floor. Just imagine it. Apparently imagining it is almost as good as doing it. And then what I'd like you to do is bring the left hand to the middle and almost in line with your feet, but not quite, maybe just about in line with where the toes start there. And then the right hand sweeps up and we look up. So in theory, lower arm, upper arm, our perpendicular hand straight up, vertical from the floor. And we try to, if we can, Open the chest so that that right side of the chest actually opens up. So you breathe into it. You can push with the base arm. Breathe, 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 breathe. And then breathing out, coming down, swapping the hands. The other one now goes to the middle, drop the head of the moment. Then the knees a little if one leg is not happy. And then, of course, we're going to do the opposite side. So, breathing in, the other hand goes up, straighten the base arm, and let me go, looking towards the ceiling, trying to open the top part of the chest. Top part of the chest, opening up right across the chest area. Okay. And then the palm of the hand is basically facing the direction that your upper chest is facing.
And if you want to, you could bend the arm to see if you can do a deeper lunge twist. And remember, staying in these poses is quite, is, well, quite hard work. It's very hard work. So if you're feeling, gosh, this is tough, indeed it is. So let's breathe out and come down and just move the hand forward a little and just rock a little forward and back. Walk the feet in a little forward and back. Okay. And then push the hands back, bend the knees. And so, we, well, no, let's actually go into the Sigma wrestler again. And they go from side to side like we did before straight and then straight and then with the head retracting into uh, as the torsus retracts into the neck. Okay. And coming up. Breathing out and breathing out and down and roll the shoulders back. Okay, so that was a little bit hard work. So I want you to bring the feet in together, kind of having a pause, take the legs out. Uh, but the benefit, the benefit. And I think that's quite often why we need the class. Because can you imagine at home, keeping in that pose that long? You're probably thinking, you know what? I'm not going to make a coffee. And then shake out the arms. I like it. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back to one end of our mat. So, a warning if you were, um, I'm wearing some really nice. Oh, product placement. Sweaty Betty. Can I have a discount? And these Sweaty Bettys, <laughs> their ankles can be really tight. And then because they've got short legs, it all gathers up around here. It's not like it's cutting off the sweaty legs, is it? It's like they need a little, um, you know, snip them to make it less. And it's not like I've got big ankles, but uh, they do feel a bit tight. Anyway, so what we're going to do from this end of the map is we're going to make a big step forward. Or we can make a little step forward and cautiously keep going. To do that, I'm going to go forward with my right leg. So how far forward would you say? I'd say if you can, if you can, longer than your leg length. Okay. And to make it easier, the wider the better. It's a, it's, a, it's a pose that will compromise various parts of the body if you are too close. And then have a look and see if this heel, if you drew from the middle of this heel back, it would actually touch where the insect starts. And then look over this front knee and let's bend it and take it over where that second toe is next to this toe. Okay. And check what happens. Do you start to compliment on the back? Do things start going wrong? Maybe place the hand here on the pelvis while you do it. So let's go down. Is that nice and strong? We're aiming, but we may not get there, to have this, this part of the leg, the thigh, and the parallel to the floor. And it might mean what I'm, I'm actually going back to that foot, which is why we have slippy mat. Okay. And if you think that's really difficult, everybody come out of it for a moment. By like gilto, he's so gilto-ing. Um, I need a chair. There isn't one. Sue, could you get me a chair, do you think? A nice flat chair, if there is such a thing. Ah, <sighs> shake out the foot. Lovely. Lovely. That's a perfect thing. That's what it needs, right? You can probably guess from the back to do, but it's logical, really. So if you're thinking, you know, actually, Sarah, this is not a good idea. Uh huh. I know. 
because you're still getting the benefits of what's happening through the body. It's a bit like um, going on to acupuncture and somebody's standing there going, do my arm. And he says, well, actually, I'd rather you actually put your arm down so I can actually get the energy to change because you're holding it in too much strain there. So if you feel you're holding it in too much strain, you get a pop. Right? But anybody want this chair? Yeah? No? Let me use the moment. Well, you know, when we're all in our in our retirement homes and we're all doing our chair yoga, then we're not fun. I'm sure we'll be sleeping away and you'll be saying, What yoga? Who are you? I thought you didn't that you before. And I'll be saying, I don't know, who's teaching today? Who <laughs> knows? Is this the cream still alive? <laughs> but we'll be having a lot of fun. So what I want you to do is go back into that phone. Oh dear, that was all on recording. Right, bending the knee. Unless I think it's funny, but maybe it was physically or something incorrect, incorrect. Maybe people don't mind. I was only joking. Okay, so abdominal area engaged. Oh, what a nice thumb. That's a rather magnificent <laughs> thumb. That's sweet. Oh, okay, so what we're doing now is go down over that knee. Okay. And this way you can the front of it. See if you can. Okay, and then that is your block. So you might want to rest your hand on there, or you might want to go down. Whichever is comfy for you. You got a block, should I check your block? You all right? Okay. And then open up. Nice. Yes. And then we open up. So again, it's that sense of getting the arm vertical, coming up straight, but bigger from the floor. And we look up at the upper arm. And we try to have that back leg straight. Breathe, 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 breathe. Breathe, 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 breathe. breathe. Lovely. And we can stay here for three hours. And then we breathe out and we come down. Turn the back foot. If you're stuck, go Gina. Drop, drop the knee onto the floor. And then you can have a pause. So nice to have a pause. Because we don't really want to expend energy moving the feet around because the feet are in a good position for the next pose. So what we do is we have a pause and then we go from there up then the front knee, and then the other side. So we go into the revolve deep lunge. Let me just check you all. Yes, that's good. So honestly, it's probably better energy-wise and benefits-wise to use a block. And it's, it's strong. I think it's strong. And I'm probably not absolutely perpendicular here. I'm doing my best. Don't let the front knee um, wander, keep it in line with that second toe, and you might feel heat building up in the face. Yes, and then straighten the front leg. We're not going down yet. Tram lines, straight, hands on either side of the foot. Okay, and then encouraging the forehead down to the shin, relaxing the shoulders, pausing, breathing. So in pregnancy, we just move so that the most of the torso is on the inside of that front leg, not pressing against the thigh of that front leg. And then from there, turn the feet, We're going sideways on, okay? Walk the feet, heel toe, heel toe, coming up, going into a forward bend, Opening out the shoulder blades. Bend the knees, push and come up. Okay, so if you're thinking, why well, didn't warn us <laughs> that this is strong, I didn't want to warn you. I just wanted to lead you into it, yoga by self. I wanted to just go for it. I'm a lax moment, 
say that. It's hot, isn't it? And we're going to do the same on the opposite side. So now you know it, you might find it easier. Now you know what we're going to do, and now also you can taste yourself. Okay? We're so going the other way, standing up once, ending your mat, stepping forward, bending that knee. Okay? Taking the hand down to the floor, or down to your block. Okay? Back foot coming out, an angle, toes pointing over there. 12 o'clock was here, toes pointing out, 11 o'clock. And the hand comes up. Lovely. And hopefully the thigh is coming towards parallel to the floor. The arms are coming up straight. The palms are facing the direction that your heart is facing, your heart centre. Open up that top shoulder, feel if you can. Breathing into it. Okay. And then breathing out, coming down. Turning the back foot, you in chum lines for a moment. And then lift and go up with the other arm. Just knee to the music block. Music block this way, this way, this way, if need be. But when we go into tram lines, it's quite a wide tram line because it gives you stability. Not one foot behind the other. Bend that front knee, widen out a bit. Like so. Harder on this side. See how you're doing. Lovely. Okay, breathing out, coming down. Straightening out both legs into straight legs forward bends, wide angle forward bend, lowering the shoulders down towards the floor, straightening out the leg as you can, tucking the chin in. If you can release around the shoulders, relax the arms. If you can let the toes work on you, if possible. And then turning the feet more to the front. Coming down into, again into that wide angle forward bend. Remember you don't have to go down too far, go down comfortably. Feet pointing, two o'clock, ten o'clock. Gonna hold on to the ankles, the shin, down onto the floor. <sighs> And again, opening out the shoulder blades, lowering the crown of the head to the floor. If you need to bend one knee because the inner thighs are hurting, do. If you need to bend both knees, do, but just make sure the knees go over the second toe. And if you feel like, because well, we're just about to finish, you feel like you'd like to do a little bit extra, with the palms upwards, take the hands through the legs behind you and just see if you can walk the backs of the hands further behind you so that you're going down into a deeper forward bend. But if you feel cramping around the belly, don't do that. Stop, because that's the belly warning you that your internal organs are not actually being given enough space. And then from there, pushing back, pushing back, pushing back with the hands coming back and gradually coming up. And I would always come up from, I'd come up to, to um, what you call sumo wrestler. Might even swing a little from side to side just for the checking the ankle joint, knee joint, hip joint. And then push them up into the star because it's a nice, counter pose what we've just done and um, you've probably noticed it but we've been doing you know because we've been doing a lot of standing work it's tiring it's really tiring and it builds up a lot of body heat and the body heat is good because it's kind of purifying 
And it's the same as what's happening at the level of the nadis and the prana, the energy point. Pure fine, pure fine. And then breathing in and coming up to the top, and breathing out and coming down. And just pausing there a moment and heel toe, heel toe, the feet back in to standing, the feet just underneath the hip joint. Press the thumbs against the heart area. Forearms about parallel to the floor ish. Shoulders back, all the way coming down. Relax the face. And then open out so that just your middle fingers are touching and your palms are parallel to the floor. And then breathe out, pushing energy down, releasing out, sending the hands towards the thighs. And releasing back into command from the interim pose. Closing out. Nothing to do. Check the ankles, right? Maybe just in case. It's quite a sneaky little ankle thing, but you're fine. It's never quite doing what it should be doing down there. Okay, and then opening the eyes, take that really red, so you're going up and down, side to side, unless you know you've got a very vulnerable um, wrist joint, and then you do it quite controlled. But if you know your wrist, it's more or less okay. And round your mouth. Okay, I'm done. So the nice thing about doing really strong work like that is you, in your own home practice, that could be the end of that sequence. And I'll send you a copy through our um, Facebook Messenger. I can send you a first copy of that. And then um, if anybody watching this who wants a copy, message me. Um, but what I was going to say, yeah, once you've done that, you know, that could be your home practice that day and you go straight into Shavasana. Did you recognize any of that, please? That's your flow. It was your flow. I was working with the flow. So we had, the, yeah, yeah. Um, during Zoom time, we had this thing where we did, we, I created a flow for each person in the class. And it was their flow. That was an adaptation, it has to be said, of Zoom's flow. I made it a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I know. Yes, yes. Because it's actually a flow where you're moving from one pose to the next almost on the breath. Whereas we were hanging around and working, working, yes, working. But I still like it. It's enormous here. It's a good one. Very good thing. And it builds up strength, which is what we need. A lot of um, especially women, actually, men are usually better on endurance and women are weaker. We need to have that strength, that internal strength. So what I thought, because we've done that, I thought, okay, well, I've worked hard. Maybe we could do something. Bill was talking to me today, and he was saying, we don't do inverted like we used to. So I'll blame him. We don't do inverted like we used to. And it's true, we don't, because I find that as people, um, as, I, as I'm watching people working in class, they don't really want to compromise their next week. This is not a good idea. And I'm just going to demonstrate to you um, what you need before you go into serious inverted poses, and then you'll see why I don't do inverted poses. And then we'll do some in adapted inverted poses. Does that sound good to you? So, um, it's always said by yoga teachers that you can't really do the shoulder stub unless you can do a good plow. And the plow is where you take your legs up over the head and the toes touch the ground. So many people look at me and go, you haven't a hope. Now the nice thing is that if you haven't a hope, the adaptation is use a good chair. So the only real tricky bit when doing the plow with a chair is gauging where the feet are going to end up. So let me think, I'm going back. Mm -hmm. there. Think about there. That's all right, isn't it? And then you're trying, if, if it can, the, the torso is coming up perpendicular. So that's the adapted pose. 
and then the non adaptive phase. So going over, as though you're going onto a chair, and then checking that your chin is well tucked in. Because after this point, I don't want you needing your neck because it's a tricky, the tricky part of the body. Keep the neck in position. Hopefully, not eating a full three course or seven course Christmas dinner. And then once you can do the plow, you see, you push the hands in and can go up into a supported or non supported shoulder stand. Right? But doing the adaptation, which is great, because the adaptation is actually called pose of tranquility. So it's not like, oh my God, we're doing the adaptation, but you know, we're not actually really doing yoga. It's just, it really is yoga. So pose of tranquility. And then you could try, if you had a good chair, we're going to do it on the benches, right of the room, because they've got a back to them. See how I'm clicking my foot into the back of the chair. And from there, trying to go up into the shoulder stand. So I can't stress to you, I can't really can't. Even then, I was slightly compromising my neck joint. You have to be so careful not to wiggle it around. If you think of it, you've got those seven limbs. Quite like, well, yeah, no, they are quite fragile, don't you? With the discs in between. So once we're in position, don't start, <laughs> don't start moving around. Just get them in position, and then the feet in position, and the feet back to keep this area absolutely static. Because there you're in the next place. And I think if I tell you that, I frighten the entire class, so I'm be very worried. If I tell you that, you're not going to hurt yourself. But if I just go, be careful of your neck vertebra go up, you might. I've seen students who go into this. So, not in this pose. But yes, there's another pose where we need it. In this pose, I need the neck vertebra to be flat. I don't want them doing anything. So if you'd like to choose a bend, I think that would be the best thing, but somebody can use the chair if they want to use the chair. Yeah. yeah. Just say your chair is here. Okay. Behind you. I'm going to have to imagine it because I'm on video. So my, oh, well, no, I could get away with using that funny chair. <laughs> <laughs> that was Robin, the famous Robin. We were just working out that we probably worked together doing yoga from 20 years ago. Yeah, so we, think so. okay. and we still look as young as we did then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the fun bit is working out if your head goes just missing the chair, you'll probably get your feet in the right place. So Robin, I'd bring, I'd come down again, yeah. bring your head a little bit away from the, yeah, so see what, yeah, build a little bit away, like that, thank you, it's lovely, oh, yeah, um, okay, how comfortable do you feel there, Susie? What's this good for? Yeah. Um, okay, so it's good for the neck, it's good for, um, Releasing pressure on the heart is good for relaxing. Um, wind release, not really a wind releaser, oh. but it relaxes all the the veins in the legs. I guess the middle gives the rest from the blood supply pumping up and down the legs, taking a bit of the rest. Internal organs that's opening out the kidneys at the back. It's massaging the liver. Um, and stomach. Um, because it's an inverted pose, the inverted pose are considered magic, magic poses, because they actually work on strongly on all the internal organs, uh, on, on the neck and the pressure that's being put on the head. 
considered beneficial? The real answer to that, Robin, is I'd have to kind of get my book and read out the long list. Okay. There's, there's, watch, <laughs> there's watching on the YouTube. Google it. No, I didn't. Okay. And then you can try and see if you could go into a protected shoulder stance from there. Okay, I'm just going to check how people are doing. Are you all right? But that's mostly there, mostly there, though. Yes. Yes. And sometimes I feel as though my chest um, is, is suffocating me. Yeah. Except for men, they don't have that problem. Yeah. 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 And because it's hard work to get up, we kind of stay in it a bit, and then we come down and we have a rest. So if you can stay up if you're off, but if you're if you've had enough, just come down and rest with the knees bent and the hands very clasped behind the head, chin tucked in a little so the back of the neck is nice and long, and relax the tops of the shoulders. And imagine that we're looking up at the sky. So some of you are still in the shoulder stands or flowers at time. But don't don't overstrain. I think I was told that a good maximum to stay in either of those two is three minutes. Um, but I would say for some people it's a minute. My own yoga teacher in Oxford, she used to consider it a really nice ending to the class to go into shoulder panel head stand for five minutes, which I found hard. I still find it a bit long. But the shoulder stand is the queen of the yoga poses. And the headstand is the king of the yoga poses because they're so beneficial. I once read out to a class three pages worth of the benefits of those two poses. I go on and on and on. Physical benefits, emotional benefits, mental benefits. I like the resting bit. Do you like the resting bit? Releasing it up slowly, Robin. Bend the knees, that's it. And don't just kind of want that. Just control from down, down, down. You're just going onto the floor. One, rest, rest, time. Yeah. And then those of us are comfortably down on the floor, bent knees, bringing the soles of the feet together. And because we're on sticky mats, you can actually use the sides of the foot <laughs> and push the heels up towards the torso. And then push the soles of the feet together some more and rock a little from side to side. So we're stuck to Bada Konasana, and we're doing a little bit of the butterfly from side to side. We're doing a lying down cobbler pose. And oh, I just noticed my chin started rising into the heavens, chin tucked in towards the chest. So after a bit of rocking from side to side, coming to slowly, slowly steady, and then stillness, but truly. It's so tempting for that stem to go rising up the heavens, open out back of the neck, and do nothing for me. Hallelujah. So well done for doing the strong inversions. And for many years, I didn't teach the headstand until I had a student. Remember Alan Robin? And he said, please, 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 really want to learn the headstand. So I said to my students, you don't have to do it. Some of you may wish to do it. To do an adaptive plow instead, you can do all the things. So gradually we got to the stage where a few people in the class were doing headstand. But it takes quite a lot of training and it takes one-to-one -one teaching, I think, to protect the neck as you go into the pose. But it is the king of poses, it's wonderful. But having said that again, you know, I hardly ever do a king um, a shoulder <laughs> Head stand, that thing, the head stand. Um, I like shoulder stand, I like plow, 
I'm quite happy with those. Um, and I'm not, I think I've not been losing a bit of my competitive edge that I used to have. More mellow in my old age. Aren't we getting mellow, Robin? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I've lost touch there. Yeah. You must be in the middle 70s. Mm. Two books, I think. Not sure. So you can even imagine that we're lying in a field and it's a summer's day. My favorite visualization is just those summer's day. The line of field. So it's imaginary, there's no biting insects. They can be buzzing around, imaginary insects, but not it's in a kind of skin or buzz. And uh, if you're if you if you get hay fever from pollen, it's an imaginary pollen, they're all right. They're okay. So there's wildflowers, blue sky, just lucky white clouds going by. There's a sense of having all the time in the world. The earth itself smells warm from the sun. Our skin is being warmed by the sun. And of course, it's imaginary that the sun is not going to harm the skin. And this is the perfect temperature. And the face melts in the left. It's almost like we've got all the time in the world. Nothing to do at all. Resting and resting down. And the breathing you quite understand. And you might be trying to put your head resting on clasped hands. Well, actually, the clasped hands are enough of that, thank you. So you might want to ease the arms out and place them. About a foot, foot and a half away from the side, the hands away from the side. That's pelvic, about a level with pelvis, arms upwards. And then maybe those shoulders a little bit too close to the ears. So push through the head, lift the shoulders up off the floor and move them down a bit towards the waist. And then that chin traces up to the heavens again, chin down towards the chest. Okay. Um, although you're staying in that position, I'm going to stop the recording. So you can stay in that pose if you are on um, watching the video. We're going to continue going into the shelf. Now.